Hello and welcome to today's geography lesson. Today we're going to discuss tropical cyclones. Now, the previous lesson we discussed mid-latitude cyclones. And on the end of this lesson, I just would like to do a comparison between mid-latitude cyclones and tropical cyclones. So let's just get started. If we look at our first slide, now I want to look at the name of this low pressure system. Tropical cyclones. Now, the most important thing that I want you to pay attention to, tropical. If you think tropical, what does it mean? Obviously, the first thing that comes to mind, warm conditions, humid conditions, basically palm trees, etc. Beautiful conditions. Now, cyclones, we already discussed in the previous lesson. And what do we know about cyclones? It's a low pressure system. It's air rising, and this air rises because of very warm conditions or because the air is being forced to rise. Now, in this case, if you look at tropical, immediately what do you tell yourself? It's a low pressure system, and the air rises because of warm conditions. Now, if you quickly look at distribution of tropical cyclones, now, Am I right if I'm saying that tropical regions, where are we going to find tropical regions? Close to this line over here, the equator. Now, in our previous lessons, we already established why the equator experienced much warmer conditions. It's because of the insulation it receives from the sun and the distance it travels much shorter. So, our tropical regions, the distribution of tropical cyclones happens from 5 degrees up into 20 degrees north and south of the equator. As you can see, this is where we find our tropical regions. Now, like the name itself explained, it's a tropical cyclone. It's a cyclone is a low pressure system. And what do we know about low pressure system? It's rising air. And Put one and one together, and obviously tropical, we're talking about warm air. Now, if you look at our next slide, if you look at the location, mainly tropical oceans. Now, where do we find our tropical oceans? Close to the equatorial regions. Usually where there's warm ocean currents involved with it. And, like I've mentioned, between 5 and 30 degrees north and south of the equator. Simple reason why is because this tropical cyclone's energy is, relies on the warm water. Now, the whole movement of this entire system moves in the wind belt that we discussed in the previous lessons. Now, as you can remember, we got the trade winds, the polar easterlies, the westerlies, and the tropical easterlies. And it recurs according to the wind belt it moves in. Now, I'm quickly going to draw a diagram to explain this to you. Now, we looked at the global air circulation. There's the equator situated over there. 50 degree latitude position over there, 60 and 90. Now, we looked at the location of the tropical cyclone, and we've established it happens between 5 degrees and between 30 degrees north and south of the equator. Very importantly, the reason why a tropical cyclone can't develop between 0 and 5 degrees is because tropical cyclones depends on Coriolis force. Now, in our previous lesson, we discussed Coriolis force. It's the deflection of the winds because of the rotation of the Earth around its own axis. Now, the Coriolis force, we don't experience much Coriolis force at the equatorial regions because of the great distance 
Corollus force is greatest at the polar regions because of the shorter distance. But let's get back to the cyclone tracks, the movement of it. Now we've already established that these are the polar easterlies, these are the westerlies, and these are the subtropical easterlies. Now, we looked at it, a tropical cyclone, where does it form? Between 5 and 30 degrees latitude. So when a cyclone develops, it develops just below the 5 degree latitude line. And as the system moves, progress, gets bigger, develop, and it's to its mature stage, it moves in the easterly wind belt. As the system gets older, we say it recurves and moves in the westerly wind belt and eventually dissipates. So if we look at the stages, I'm going to draw you roughly a diagram of Southern Africa and the path that a tropical cyclone might follow. Okay, this is South Africa. Now, we did experience the effects of a tropical cyclone in the beginning of 2017, and that was tropical cyclone De Nier. There's Madagascar. Now, if you look at quickly, let's just draw the degree of latitude, 30 degree, and let's say over here is the 5 degree latitude. Now, very importantly, we already established tropical cyclones can't form between 0 degrees and 5 degrees of latitudinal position. That's at the equator because it requires Corollus force. So the system, as you notice now, what's the trade winds in this area over here? It's there. Tropical easterlies. And what do we call the trade winds over here? The westerlies. So when a tropical cyclone develop, the initial stage is usually over here. And as the system mature, means getting bigger, it moves in that direction over there because it's moving with the tropical easterlies. So mature stage, so over there, and then eventually, as it gets to the 30 degree latitude line, it starts to recurve and move away. And it usually dissipates, meaning the cycle dies off because it reaches called the water that we will discuss in a couple of minutes. So that's the movement of a tropical cycle. Now, if we just quickly go back to our first slide, Tropical cyclones happens all along the 5 degree and 20 degree latitude position. Now we call them different names all over the world. Where we are situated, we call them tropical cyclones. Japan, the Asian countries, it's known as typhoons. And the Americas, I'm talking South America and North America, call them hurricanes. And believe it or not, the Australians have their own name for them, and it's known as Willy Willies. Australians, don't know where they come up with it, but they did. Now, okay, as a tropical cyclones takes place, it usually happens on east coast of continents. The simple reason why is because east coast of continents is usually washed by warm ocean currents. I mean, if you look at southern Africa, for example, the east coast has been washed by the warm ocean B current. Where does it get this warm uh, currents from? Because it's coming from the equator. Now, they do not travel inland. The simple reason why is because we're going to have a look at it in a couple of minutes. 
That's because the ocean is this tropical cyclone's energy, source of energy. It requires the warm ocean water to develop and become as fierce as it usually is. Now, there's the names that I've mentioned to you. Hurricanes. People call them hurricanes in America. Willy Willies in Australia. Typhoons in Japan. And here at home, we just know them as tropical cyclones. Now, when do tropical cyclones occur? Very important, Great Tops. Late summer. The reason why we experience tropical cyclones late summer this is when the ocean temperature is the warmest. I'm going to give you a simple example. Now, let's say, for instance, we go to a pool party and we jump into the swimming pool, let's say, 10 o'clock in the morning. What's the water going to be like? Cold. You get out on the pavement, nice and warm. But let's say that same day, you jump into that swimming pool at 5 o'clock that afternoon. What's the water going to be like? Nice and warm. Now, the reason why tropical cyclones develop late summer is because it's when the ocean temperatures is the warmest. Now, it's very important. Tropical cyclones need an ocean temperature of above 27 degrees Celsius. Very importantly, you need to keep in mind, this is the fuel for the system. This is the energy. It's this is if you can compare it to the car, it's the petrol for the car to drive. Now, it needs this very warm ocean temperatures of 27 degrees Celsius. Please don't get confused during the final exam. It's the ocean temperatures that needs to be above 27 degrees Celsius and not the air temperature. Now, when do we experience late summer? Between January and March. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to add this to it very importantly. When we look at cyclones, it's a tropical cyclone, it's a low pressure system, it's a clockwise circulation in the southern hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere, it's an anti-clockwise circulation, and when do they experience late summer? Between July to September. Now, the circulation of air within a tropical cyclone, I've just explained to you. In the southern hemisphere, clockwise circulation. In the northern hemisphere, anti-clockwise circulation. Now, we have already established it's a low pressure system and it's categorized by very strong fierce winds. If we look at our next slide, we're going to look at the conditions for the formation of a tropical cyclone. Now, conditions need to be nearly perfect, and I'm going to discuss each of them with you in a moment. But once again, keep in mind. This tropical cyclones can only form between 5 and 20 degrees north and south of the equator. It can't form at, Corollis, at the, between 0 degrees and 5 degrees, 5 degrees because it needs Corollis force, and usually on the east coast of continents because they experience warm ocean currents. Now, if we look at the conditions for the formation of a tropical cyclone, hurricane, typhoon, or like the Australians call them, willy willies, we need the most important thing, an ocean temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. Now, with warm temperatures, what do we experience? Automatically, rising air. Now, in the last two lessons, we know that the rising air is known as a low pressure. Now, conditions need to be absolutely perfect. We need warm ocean temperatures, of 27 degrees Celsius, we need humid conditions. What does humid mean? It needs to, means there needs to be a lot of moisture in the air. Now, that's what the warm ocean currents bring to the party. It creates a lot of moisture, the warm ocean currents. And we need these humid conditions because it basically forms the precipitation that we see in mid latitude cyclones. Now, basically what happens, because of this warm ocean temperatures and extremely hot and humid conditions, we experience excessive rising air in the form of convection currents. And as you know by now, the rising air basically is because of the low pressure system 
have developed, has developed. The high humility, obviously because it's needed for condensation. Now, very importantly, when evaporation takes place, it's because of the warm temperatures, warm surrounding temperatures, and the high humility is because of the warm ocean currents. Now, when, let's say for instance, we look at our water surface. When we look at our water surface, when it's extremely hot, what happens? The water evaporates. And eventually, as the air rises, what happens to it eventually? It will condense. Now, in grade 10, you've learned about the heating of the atmosphere. And one of the factors that helps heating the atmosphere is latent heat. Now, what is latent heat? It's when the gas, liquid, the gas, the water vapor, turns it back into a liquid. When this process takes place, it's known as condensation. What happens? Latent heat is being released. Now, this latent heat is also very important for the formation of a tropical cyclone. After the break, we will continue with the factors necessary for the formation of a tropical cyclone.